In the heart of the ancient world, at one of its greatest crossroads, linking Babylonia and China, a civilization was born. People from all over Asia flowed through it. Traders and students, merchants and preachers settled in its great cities. A millennium before the Renaissance in Europe, it flourished as a center for education and for the distinctive art of Gandhara. But for almost 1,000 years, Taxila was lost. Buried below soil and grass, its secrets locked in stone. Taxila was founded around the 6th century BCE and it flourished for nearly a thousand years. Its position connected Gandhara in the west to the Ganges Valley in the east and Kashmir in the north to the Indian Ocean in the south. It was a thriving metropolis, embracing many different cultures and faiths. One of the world's first universities flourished here between the first and fifth centuries, advancing the study of philosophy, literature, mathematics, astronomy and medicine. It was a home and training ground for many of antiquity's greatest scholars. Panini, the renowned grammarian, Caraca, a famous master of medicine, and Cortilia, a pioneer of political science and economics. Texela Mukhtri Fokat me teen shahro pe mushtamil raha hai, jo ek ke baad ek huye, jin me aaj kal ham jin ko kehte hain Bhir Mount, dusra Sirkap, aur tisra Sirsuk. In sab ko mila ke Hindu mythology credits the legendary hero Rama's nephew with the founding of Taxila, and evidence suggests it's where the Mahabharata was first recited. Bhir Mount, jo sabse pehle abad hua, John Marshall ko iski khudai mein se aisi choti choti figurine mili. जो ये साबित करती थी कि उस वक्त हिंदुइज्म यहाँ पे प्रैक्टिस किया जाता था। सबसे पहली हिंदू शराइन यहाँ पे मिली है। Taxila was the capital of Hindus, a kingdom in western Punjab. The Achaemenids under Darius the Great added it to their empire in the 6th century BCE and ruled here for over 300 years. When Alexander of Macedon invaded the region, Taxila fell. But his armies soon turned back towards home and in around 321 BCE, Chandragupta Maurya conquered the region. It was during the reign of his grandson, Ashoka, that Buddhism really gained ground. The first monks settled in Taxila, building the impressive Dharmarajika Stupa. Dharmarajika Stupa is the most important thing in Taxila, because in this rally casket, Lord Buddha Taxila became a heartland for pilgrims from as far away as Central Asia and China. And when they left, they took with them the religion which eventually came to be carried across the continent.
Fifty years later, the Bactrian king Demetrius conquered the region, and he founded the second city, Serkap. In typical Greek style, it was laid out in a grid pattern and fortified with thick stone walls. The straight main road divided the 1200 meter long town into two halves. And the streets were regular with shrines, houses and shops on either side. We can still see the workshop of a goldsmith here. The stone mold he used to fashion bangles and gold bars has survived through the ages. As in ancient Greek cities, there was even an acropolis within the city walls. The Apsidal Temple is the largest sanctuary of Serkap. Amazingly, the ancient people of Serkap even had their own town clock. This sundial was a shrine to the sun god. And in this temple, some of the ashes of Mahavira, the revered Jain teacher, were reportedly buried. The easy interaction between different faiths is clearly seen in the stupa of the double-headed eagle. This shrine ke motif ye zahar karte hain ke in pe saka Indo-Greek cheeze milti hain. कि एक ही वक्त में मुख्तलिफ लोग इसकी पूजा किया करते थे The city continued to flourish under the Scythians, the Parthians and the Cushans. As the population grew, the Cushan king Kanishka chose to fashion a new town in a lush green valley. Siosuk was famous for its fortifications. But the most striking legacy of this period is the Buddhist monasteries that were built high above the city. Rising 300 feet above the Taxila Valley on a picturesque hilltop, away from the heat and dust of the city, is the Jolian Monastery. Its stupas are lavishly decorated, and huge ornate sculptures of Buddhas once lined the walls. Each stupa encloses the remains of a revered monk from the monastery. In the tranquil second court are the monks' cells, built for meditation and study, for this was a university. The Mora Maradu Monastery was also built far from the city, allowing the monks to meditate and study here in perfect tranquility. Taxila was the model of a peaceful multicultural society, one that valued art and education. But by the 5th century, it lay largely abandoned. So what happened to this ancient metropolis? When Hans came here, the people of Buddhist Shanshahu got patronage from them, and the patronage was finished. And these people started to abandon this place, and they started to abandon this place. By the 5th century, there was a resurgence of the old Brahmanic faith. Many felt Buddhism had become too decadent, with opulent stupas and monasteries, and its original message had been lost. Vegetation constantly threatens to overtake the excavations 
and earthquakes have affected the area in the past. Industrial estates have also expanded into the Taxila Valley, with limestone blasting and quarrying badly impacting the ancient sites. But one of the greatest losses to Taxila has been from the looting and trafficking of artifacts from the Buddhist sites. उनको इस तरह से तबाह किया गया कि लोगों ने इनको स्मगल किया इन चीजों की मार्केट जो है वो दुनिया में बहुत ऊंची थी हमारे पढ़े लिखे लोग भी कॉम्प्लेसेंट थे उन्होंने कोई एहतियात नहीं किया यहां से लोगों ने इकट्ठे करके चीजें उनको जो है स्मगल करना शुरू कर दिया और पैसे कमाने शुरू कर दिए जो हमारे लिए अटली शेमफुल है अपने बच्चों को सिखाना चाहिए कि ये विरसा जो है ये किसी एक शख्स का एक खानदान का नहीं है ये पूरी कौम का है दीज ट्रेजर्स आर पार्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान हेरिटेज अ मल्टी कल्चरल हेरिटेज दैट स्पैंस द सेंचुरीज फ्रॉम द ओरिजिनल हिंदू एंड बुद्धिस्ट इनहेबिटेंट्स through waves of muslim and sikh invasions and conquests they hold the key to the history of this land and the ancestry of its people but they also belong to the rest of the world as a record of human civilization it is our responsibility to preserve them for the benefit of future generations so that they too can take a glimpse into their past. <laughs>